welcome to numerical sheep and offshore hydrodynamics. Today is the lecture 39. Today we are going to discuss uh, some uh, basic mathematical formulation of strip theory. Uh, to be very specific, we are going to discuss mainly uh, the boundary value problem for the radiation problem. Now, now by this time you are very well that uh, mainly we are going to deal with the three sorts of hydrodynamic forces, one is truth scale law, one is direction, one is radiation. So, today we are going to focus on the radiation force okay? and these are the keywords that you are going to use to get this lecture. Okay? Let us start. Now, if I write uh, a differential equation for the radiation problem, so definitely phi has to satisfy the uh, Laplace equation which is the equation 1, this one. So, phi must satisfy this Laplace equation, you can call that as equation 1, right. And then it must satisfy the linear uh, uh, free surface boundary condition. Now, looking at this expression, we understand uh, this expression is written in the body fixed system. Right? Because in case of the earth fixed system that this second term, uh, this one will not be uh, present. Okay. Now, uh, frankly speaking that we have not yet discussed uh, very uh, elaborately about this body reference frame and the fixed reference frame. Uh, we are going to do this when we, when you, when you are going to do for the three dimensional panel method that time um, definitely discuss again all these things. Okay, but right now for this moment, it is sufficient to uh, know that in case of a body fixed system, we are having one extra term which is coming over here. And uh, already in our previous lecture, we discussed how this uh, expression comes. Okay. Now also this is the uh, body boundary condition and it is applied on the, I, of course I forget this must be applied z equal to 0, right. Now in case of a uh, linear body boundary condition, it is definitely on S0. Now, if you remember that uh, we draw actually there are just again I am drawing over here like we have uh, a shape. Now, this is your z equal to 0 and we can call is the weighted surface uh, at z equal to 0 uh, and it is the mean weighted surface. We can call this as mean weighted surface right. However, if I superpose the wave onto this, so some part will uh, going out of the, uh, I mean of this mean weighted, some part will be out from that water part and some part will include. Now, if I consider this and this we can define this is S0. Now, if we consider this exact weighted surface we can call that is S B. So, uh, these are the nomenclature that if you are very much familiar with then uh, it is useful. So, when, whenever I say it is S 0, you have to understand it is on the mean weighted surface. Now, again this part already known to you, right. Because uh, you know that we are we are we are defining we have in 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 case in WAMIT type solution also we have used this one. Now this additional term which is related to the m term this is only coming because of the forward speed right. As you know that if you write the expression in terms of uh, moving reference term again one point you should be very careful to know that this all this formulation. It is based on moving reference frame. In case of a fixed reference frame, this we do not have the same terms. Okay. Fine. Now, here also, uh, you know, so this term is coming because of that, and then this is the you know, this is your uh, bottom boundary condition. So, at bottom, that grad phi should be equal to 0, or to be specific. Uh, normally, we, we go with del phi del z equal to 0, however, this in all direction is 0. 
and then this is the uh, so called radiation condition. So, this is the general formulation for uh, I, I would say that uh, forward speed C keeping problem in frequency domain. Okay. I repeat this is the formulation for the forward speed C keeping problem in frequency domain. Okay. So, uh, however, uh, in this is the general um, and this is for the three dimensional body. right? However, we need to do some kind of uh, simplification as we mentioned in uh, my previous class that uh, we need to do some simplification by assuming something. right? So, what we are going to do is let us uh, find out that what are the that assumptions that we are making. right? So, now uh, here also is the same we discussed in the last class also. So, here also is why I am telling so many times just is kind of hammering like uh, these things is so important you should have should not have any kind of confusion about the assumptions. So, here the assumptions are the beam is much smaller than the length therefore, the longitudinal component of the unit vector to the hull surface may be neglected. So, so therefore, in case of now if you see that the Laplace equation uh, okay, uh, in Laplace equation here uh, this term the variation here I mean we could neglect actually you can say that the variation along the x axis is not that important. Okay. So, this is one and second is the, the frequency oscillation is high therefore, the free surface boundary condition may be assumed 2D. Now, what is that? We, we discussed that uh, in last class also just again I am just repeating the thing. Now, as you said that uh, the free surface when you create a disturbance uh, the wave is propagating in all directions right normally. So, if you create a disturbance over here then this it propagate in all direction in, in circular fashion right. Now, uh, actually just to see that I can I, you can see that our uh, radiation uh, that our radiation condition if you look at here it is about the del del r right that very much telling you that is always it is in the radial direction right fine. Now, here in case of a high frequency phenomena if I consider this as a high frequency phenomena we can assume that uh, this all this propagation are parallel to each other. So, it is on only on this horizontal direction. So, it does not propagate in all directions. So, this is the underlying assumption when you say that we are taking the high frequency oscillation. So, therefore, the, the, the free surface boundary condition may be assumed at 2D. Okay. So, now uh, very specifically this from the practical point of view uh, this restriction that uh, it is a two dimensional. Uh, for heave and pitch it is not that important okay? uh, because in, in case of a, a low frequency region mainly the hydrostatic and fluid killer force are dominating. right? So, that also we have discussed uh, very thoroughly uh, or extensively in our previous uh, lecture that you know that and you know, I many times I give an example like when you go to the ocean and go for a bath and this wave is coming you are simply going out and going down. So, when, when you are doing this that moment that there is not much waves are radiated by you and there is not much wave got diffracted by you as well. So, you are simply uh, moving up and down with the waves that time that fruit killer force and the hydrostatic force these two forces are mainly played a significant role. Now, mathematically also it is true because uh, I just take a few minute uh, because you know if you write the equation of motion uh, sorry 
if you write the equation of motion, uh, mostly we are writing here like uh, m plus uh, okay. It is m plus a into x double dot plus b x dot plus c x equal to x. So, this is something that we are writing. Now, if you take this x is harmonic, so what is happening this, this term comes with minus omega square into m plus a and this term comes with i into b omega and this is c and then everything multiplied by some j is equal to a. Right. Now, if you take uh, this for the low frequency region, uh, that means an omega tending to 0. So, in low frequency region omega tending to 0, we can simply say c into xi is equal to your x f. Right. So, therefore, in low frequency region I can understand this added mass uh, quantities and this uh, the damping part that does not have much significance mostly the restoring and the exciting force that plays a significant role. Okay. Now, but however, for the horizontal motion uh, and the high frequency adjunction may be introduce some kind of numerical uh, you know accuracy it is possible. Okay. And even in case of a following speed also it could be a problem because that leads to uh, you know uh, the, that, that, that as I mentioned when you do the encounter frequency and all that uh, following CO is always a problem. However, we are lucky that most of the time that major hydrodynamic force uh, actually uh, most important uh, in head, head wave conditions right. So, uh, I mean uh, that is why it is uh, better not to use this uh, strip theory for the following sea condition because sometimes uh, the you can have some numerical inaccuracy or the code might not work properly. Anyway, let us go ahead. Now, if you remember I said that uh, in case of a finding out the, the radiation force it is we are doing for the zero speed problem. And then we introduce some kind of forward speed effect when I doing for the uh, finding out the added mass for the three dimensional body. Now, here also from this equation also one can understand that the two dimensional problem we are solving in case of a zero speed. Now, you see that here we are dropping the x term. So, the Laplace equation is simplified right. So, this the equation one is the Laplace equation which is simplified. And then also we are doing this uh, the second equation also that free surface boundary condition also we are replacing the phi t t because this u term we are we, we did not uh, drop the u term because for the zero speed condition. So, it, it is as same as the uh, floating body problem right. So, this is the equation in case of a floating body. Right? Here, uh, See when I say the j, it is the jth mode, right? Okay. And then if you look at this, the third boundary condition, this one, and also you know from here all how I get it, I just drop that u into you know del this del this term. If I drop this term u del del x, then you get this one. And here also I am dropping that m terms, right? that m terms actually m m uh, u into m j that terms actually I am dropping because again I am saying that is the that is the main flavor of the strip theory. I am solving this boundary value problem in case of a zero speed and then we develop some theory to incorporate uh, incorporate something so that uh, I mean incorporate the forward speed effect in other words. Okay. But when you solve the two dimensional problem it is always in the zero speed. So, uh, so these are the major three uh, equations. So, these are governing equation 1 
and then we are going to dis, uh, solve this equation based on this uh, uh, linear free surface boundary condition and uh, as well as the uh, linear body boundary condition and these two are radiation condition and uh, bottom boundary conditions are always there. Now, uh, here also you know to be very specific, uh, here I did not mention about the splitting of my total potential phi because we understand already uh, this total potential phi is combination of phi r uh, plus phi i and then phi d, right. So, we are only discuss about this phi r's, right. So, at this point uh, today we are only discussing about the radiation problem, we are not discussing about the excite, excitation problem or the diffraction problem that is why I am writing uh, the modifying boundary condition which includes the exciting force component also right. So, here it is only we are applying del phi del n is equal to V n right. And then now you understand then this is equal to i omega right V n equal to i omega n and you know very well uh, from our potential flow theory that one meter is solution uh, how we can obtain this uh, i omega n right. So, uh, so here we understand two things one is I am dropping the forward speed term number 1 and also this psi the radiation potential this is only for the unit amplitude of motion. Right. So, so that is why because otherwise you do not get this i omega n j right because I assume my motion expression let us say x equal to unit amplitude 1 into e to the power i omega t. So, my velocity x dot equal to i omega into e to the power i omega t and that actually I substitute over here because my del phi del n is nothing but v dot n now v dot n nothing but my i omega into multiply by my n the normal. I hope we discuss a lot before also today also I am discussing. So, I hope that this thing is clear to you right now. So, this is what is written over here uh, this is the 2D boundary value problem uh, of an arbitrary cross section oscillating on the free surface with a harmonic motion of unit amplitude right and psi represent the two dimension radiation potential for the harmonic motion of unit amplitude right and why we are choosing this unit amplitude and what is the benefit of using this uh, unit amplitude that we discussed a lot before. So, today I am not going to discuss this anymore ok. So, now uh, here assume that I am getting the I mean today mainly we are focusing on the overall uh, description of the radiation waves. Uh, so, we are we are not really going to detail analysis of how we are obtain this uh, the two dimensional added mass coefficient a and uh, two dimensional damping coefficient b in our future lecture definitely we are going to discuss the same, but here today our idea is having the uh, you know this two dimension added mass and damping suppose I have this then how could I write the radiation force. So, now uh, this radian radiation force has definitely has two component. So, one is go with the the acceleration and we call that is an added mass. So, that is what I written is this that. Uh, so, it is equivalent to initial force for the transcendental motion and uh, moment of inertia of the rotational motion. Now, here uh, people might have problem with the with this physical explanation which is equivalent mass that accept together with the rigid body. However, I would say that uh, 
the correct mathematical way uh, to describe uh, the added mass as uh, we create and disturbance the oscillated body in unit unit motion amplitude and then because of this oscillation we have a pressure field around the body and now if we integrate the pressure field uh, then we can then we can see that some component is going with the acceleration and some con component is going with the velocity now that part is going with the acceleration we call the added mass now this is mathematically fine but then in realistically suppose you are in shipyard and suddenly uh, you try to find out the natural frequency of some uh, some vessel you so then uh, if your boss tell that see you have some 5 to 10 minutes time to predict the what would be the uh, natural time period then that time you need to estimate the added mass then how do you do that so that time normally you are taking some for for heave added mass and all you are taking some 80 percent 90 percent of the mass right so that time when you approximation approximating this added mass that time mostly we are actually following this concept only okay it might not be mathematically very correct but in practical application people used to uh, do this sort of thinking to estimate the added mass. So, if you remember that is why I said now suppose if you have a body is a body along body like this and then if I ask you a question that can you tell me that if this added mass in this direction is more or added mass on this direction is more. So, that means I ask you if the added mass A33 is magnitude is of A33 is more or magnitude of A11 is more. Now, you people definitely going to answer that a magnitude of A33 is way more than the A11 because if you oscillate in this vertical direction, then you are actually oscillate this larger part of the mass, right? You are moving the larger part of the mass. And if you oscillate in this direction, you are oscillate the smaller area. So, in that way we understand that charge added mass is uh, lesser than the heave added mass, maybe roll added inertia much lesser than the pitch added moment of inertia, right. So, anyway, so those are the, uh, those are the, you know, engineering way of looking at the problem. Now, the second part is of course, which is going with the velocity we call as a the radiation damping. Okay. Now, suppose I have uh, these two things, how I get this? Now, again I am using the, the same that is the result for uh, from Wamit, this is the same result. I mean the for frequency dimensional solution, this is the expression for the added mass and damping. We have already discussed the expression of the added mass and damping before and, and, and believe me this the way getting it, it is exactly the same the way we are getting for the three dimensional frequency driven problem. There is nothing, there is absolutely no change. In that case we are taking a panel. Now what we are going to take for in, in case of two dimensional, definitely we are going to discuss later on. But the process, the differential equation, the boundary condition, uh, the splitting of the surface, getting the boundary uh, condition at each, pa each panel. Now, in that case, each segment, all are same and then, and then the final expression also same. Only thing you can see here that in case of a three dimensional body, I used to go for everything. I used to go from this j equal to I used to go from 1 to 6. However, in case of this uh, the strip theory, the j is only oscillate in three modes, right? It is 2, 3 and 4 which is sway, uh, heat and then the roll, right? Why? Because you see this is my a two dimensional body. So, therefore, it can only oscillate now it is if you take this is y and z direction. So, therefore, uh, it can oscillate about the, I mean on the z direction, these are translational motion which is, which is nothing but my 3. 
it can go in the y direction right which is the 2 and also we can have a moment which is the 4. Now, so therefore, when we solve the two dimensional problem, we only solve for the mode 2 which is sway, we solve for mode 3 which is heap and we solve for mode 4 uh, which is roll. Okay. And from there when you do the integration we can get 1, uh, 3 and 5 from this 3 result uh, sorry uh, 1, 5 and 6 from, from this 3 result we can always getting all, all uh, remaining, remaining 3 modes. If we have this 3 mode value we can from here we can get all this uh, remaining 3 modes that we are going to see later on. Okay. So, now if you have if you have the, the slender body and if you have uh, take this section out of it right and now from the previous uh, previous slide uh, we, we saw that it is actually component of added mass and damping. So, that is actually I am I am writing over here right in two dimensional case it should be now here just indexing a, 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 you should not con confuse with the indexing that k is the index the first index that k it is that which mode I am trying to figure out my radiation force and then the second index which is j it is that which mode I try to oscillate my body. It means that suppose I have this body and now, now I want to find out what is the added mass in the in the direction of 3. So, in that case my k becomes 3. However, I can oscillate the body uh, let us take in roll also. So, in that case I am trying to figure out that force at, at the mode 3 while I am oscillating body in mode 4. So, in that case it is F 3 4 right. So, therefore, it is equal to it says that xi that amplitude of so oscillation of that mode which is 4 and multiply by the omega square into added mass at which I try to find figure out the force in that case it is 3 and then the second index is at direction I am trying to oscillate which is 4 minus i into omega. So, damping coefficient also the first component that side which is I try to figure out that I am interested to get the force on that direction in that case is heave and then I am oscillating the body in the direction of 4. So, this is how actually we write here over here. So, you can see the expression. So, F k j equal to A k j minus i omega into B k j where this k stands for the mode which I am interested to get the force and j stands for the mode I am oscillating the body. So, therefore, if I try to find out then what is the force my third mode. So, definitely it is a summation right. Summation is suppose if I oscillate the body in the second mode and then I try to figure out what is the force in the third mode plus if I oscillate the body in the third mode then what is the force I am getting in the mode, mode 3 plus if I oscillate the body in the fourth mode and then what is the oscillation of the body right. So, that is how you can see over here this summation j equal to 4. So, this j stands for, uh, stands for that at which mode I am oscillating the body. So, therefore, j equal should be 2, 3 and 4. However, you can see my k is here that means at which mode I am interested to get the force. Now, if I if you understand this very correctly, then we are done actually. Then very easily you can understand this is the expression that I am writing uh, for the heave mode. Now, heave mode is, is not coupled with any other mode. In this equation, this heave mode is not coupled with any other mode. So, therefore, I have a single expression for the heave. However, if I go for the sway 
Now, sue is always coupled with role. Okay. Now, you see that that now soe means you know soe let us take uh, I mean better better is not the pen maybe this mobile. Now what is happening soe means it is oscillating this. Now what is what is happening when this going in this direction it can you know roll also. Now you see it can roll in two way like you see it is with face it going left side I am rolling this way going right side rolling this way this is one orientation right. And what is the other orientation? Other orientation is I am going and then I am having this way also I can I can use it. Right. So, I can see that roll and sway are coupled each other. So, therefore, I have to use the coupled equation motion for the uh, for the sway. So, this is what what is you can see from this expression right. We have the first term the first term is for the uh, you know we have this first term this first term is for the uh, sway mode and again we have this second term, this second term is for the roll mode. Okay. So, similarly uh, we can understand that when we consider the roll motion also that also coupled with the sway. So, here also I can see the first term is the you know that this is the your uh, for the roll and then the second term which is basically for the Sway. So, now I understand that how I can write the two dimensional uh, you know radiation force for a particular section now. So, now uh, maybe uh, we stop today at this point and in the in the in the next class we start from this point. Now, uh, writing it in a two dimensional section. So, how can we write for the three dimensional body uh, how how we can write it so that that thing we can discuss from the from next class and also uh, if you have time then we can discuss for the exciting force also which is combination of the diffraction and the fruit killer okay so thank you very much